You want to learn how to code, but you're not quite sure where to start. In this video, I'm going to cover the basics that you need to get started on your coding journey. Hi, my name's Sarah. I'm a software developer. My pronouns are she and her, and today I'm filming from the lands of the Paramank people, where sovereignty was never ceded. I pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. I work with Code Like a Girl to provide education and opportunities to help us all become equal creators in building the future. The first thing you're going to need as you start your coding journey is a reason. You want to learn how to code, but why? Start by getting clear on the answer to this question. Maybe you have a passion project that you need the skills to get off the ground. Maybe you are looking for a career change or you're looking to move into the tech industry, or you might want to future-proof your skill set so that you can be successful in any industry. You might want to use coding to do something creative, or you might want to contribute more to the world of technology, or maybe you're just curious about what this whole coding thing is and want to find out whether or not it's for you. Whatever your reason is, trust it, believe it, it's going to be the motivation that you need to get started and to keep going. Secondly, you'll need some resources. So have a think about how your learning will fit into the context of your life and what resources in terms of things like time, skills, and money that you have to dedicate to it. You will need time. Learning to code requires lots of practice, and that means scheduling a recurring block of time into your calendar that you can dedicate to learning. So you might wake up half an hour earlier every day to get in 30 minutes of coding practice before work, or maybe you wanna put in marathon three hour sessions every weekend. Just be consistent. Learning to code is really learning another language. So think about it like as if you're learning something like German or Japanese. You will need to be immersed in it for at least a few months before you start to gain fluency. Now, in terms of skills, you will need some basic digital literacy. So this includes things like knowing how to operate a web browser, having some proficiency with typing, being able to access the internet and generally knowing how to navigate around a computer. What about money? Special equipment can be expensive and professional qualifications do usually come with a high price tag, so that's something to keep in mind for the future. However, this doesn't mean that you need a lot of money or in fact, any money at all to start. Third, you'll need some tools of the trade and I'm talking about hardware and software. In terms of hardware, you will need a computer, but you don't really need anything particularly powerful or expensive to start with. A basic desktop or laptop computer with Windows or Mac OS installed is really ideal. You can also learn using devices like tablets and microcomputers, things like Raspberry Pis. As long as you have a graphical user interface, which is kind of a fancy way of talking about screen, something to type with, an internet connection, and a web browser. And that brings me to software. Again, you don't need anything particularly professional when you're starting out. All you need is a web browser. Later down the track, you might wanna think about using something called an IDE, or Integrated Development Environment, but it's really not necessary to start with. With a web browser, something like Chrome, Safari, Firefox, you'll be able to access interactive learning platforms, learning environments and tutorials where you can practice coding exercises right there in the browser and see instant feedback. Most computers come pre-installed with a browser so you can either use the default there or open that one up, connect to the internet and download your browser of choice. Number four, pick a language that you're going to learn and find some references to help you learn it. There are so many coding languages that you can learn. Some are more beginner friendly than others. So here's where you'll probably wanna do a bit of research. A lot of people will suggest learning Python or Ruby or JavaScript when you're first starting out because these languages are quite easy to pick up and quite fun to learn. They also have big communities behind them and heaps and heaps of tutorials and courses at every price point and every skill level. 
While it's a good idea to pick one language and stick with it, really learn the core concepts, there's nothing wrong with trying out a few different languages while you're getting started and tinkering with some different languages might actually help you determine which one suits you best and which one you want to dedicate more time and energy to. And again, you don't really need any money to get started. There are lots of free online tutorials and online learning environments that you can try out before you decide to sign up for a paid course. With free tutorials, you'll find out very quickly whether coding is or isn't for you. It's kind of like signing up and paying for a gym membership but never actually going to work out. The benefit of paid courses over free content is that you do usually get extra value. So things like premium learning content, access to peers and tutors and mentors, certificates of completion and qualifications, and some can even give you connections into industry. You can find free and paid resources for beginner-friendly coding languages like Python and JavaScript just by searching online. But Code Like a Girl has done some of the hard work here. We do have a great list of education materials that are both free and paid um, listed on our blog. So I'll link that in the description of this video. Number five, find a coding community. Having people to talk to about what you're learning can make a big difference to your motivation and your success over time. So find peers, mentors, and support networks. Talking to people about the things you're learning can help you to integrate those concepts more quickly and more efficiently. And it also helps you to keep up to date with changes that are happening in the languages that you're working in and trends in the industry. So how do you find this coding community? Social media is a really good place to start. There are huge communities of developers on Twitter and Instagram, uh, as well as Facebook and LinkedIn, people of all different skill levels and experiences and interests. No matter what your social media platform of preference is, if you look, you will find coding enthusiasts there. In your local area, have a look out for meetup groups that might be holding in-person or online events around specific languages or special interests. I've been to PHP meetups and WordPress meetups and JavaScript meetups in coffee shops and co-working spaces and recently a lot of them are online as well via video conference. And similarly, look out for conferences and events that might be being held locally or virtually because that's another great way to connect with people who are there to participate and to speak as well as industry who are involved. Now, I know these sorts of things can be really daunting when you don't know anyone, but it's a good opportunity to get outside of your comfort zone and challenge yourself, as well as being able to make connections and learn from other people. If you're struggling to find a coding community, talk to your family and friends about what you're doing and ask them to help keep you accountable. As you go along, you might even become the coding authority in your network. And if you can find someone else, just one other person who might be interested in learning how to code, you can teach them. You only need to stay one week ahead of them to teach them. And this can be really rewarding because not only do you get to help somebody, but it also really helps you to solidify your own understanding of a concept when you have to explain it to somebody else. And the final thing that's really going to help you get started with coding is the right mindset. You'll need curiosity. Coding is often thought of as quite a logical practice, and it is, but it's also a really creative pursuit. Problems come in all shapes and sizes, and there's never just one way to solve them. So a good coder will use their curiosity to creatively solve problems by looking at them from many different angles. You'll need resilience. Looking at problems from many different angles is, is experimentation, and experimentation inevitably results in a series of failures before you reach success. So having resilience means that you won't let these failures stop you. They won't be setbacks, but rather you'll see them as individual stepping stones on the road to success. You will need patience. Coding can be dull, it can be frustrating, and it does take a long time to learn because there are so many concepts to cover. While coding is easy to get started with, 
The languages do take a long time to master. So have patience and trust that you will get there if you stick with it. You will need confidence. It's time to get real with the voice inside your head that's telling you you're not good enough. Many of us have experienced this. I've experienced this throughout my career to varying degrees, and it's often known as imposter syndrome. It's kind of there to protect us from making fools of ourselves in front of our social groups, but usually what it ends up doing is holding us back and we become our own worst enemies and our own biggest roadblock. So when you hear this voice, when you feel this part of yourself that says, I'm not good enough. I'm an imposter. They're going to catch me out. Don't ignore it, but acknowledge it. Thank it for helping to protect you and keep you safe and then move beyond it. Go ahead with confidence knowing that you will make mistakes. It will be challenging. It will take time and use that confidence and everything else in your toolkit to achieve that goal that you set for yourself the reason that you wanted to start learning to code in the first place. So there you go. Those are the basic things that you'll need to get started learning how to code. You'll need a reason to start learning, some resources, mainly being time. You'll need some tools of the trade, so software and hardware. You'll need to pick a coding language and find some education materials to help you learn. You need a community to help keep you going and the right mindset to keep you strong. Good luck on your coding journey and connect with us on social media to see more from Code Like a Girl. Thank you so much to everybody who makes Code Like a Girl possible. Please visit our website to learn more about what we do and leave a comment if you have any questions or any tips for learning how to code. Keep coding, I'll see you next time. Bye.